Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Lady Nika, and with another episode of Their View, Their Business, and My Views. This is where I come in and get in people's business and give you my views. My, my, these are just my opinions. These are not facts written in stone, but they are the thoughts and the opinions of the channel holder, which is myself. Um. I put up a community post. Um, anybody that is interested in actually being a part of that panel discussion, please hit me up. But either way, I'm going to come in and discuss it. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, please visit the community post. And there is a questionnaire there. And if you would like to be a part of that uh, panel discussion that is coming up on this channel, please reach out to me via my email, which is always in the description box of every video, or you can reach out to me on Instagram at lady underscore Nika. Thank you. Now, I want to dig into this situation right here of uh, this handsome young king that is no longer with me and how police seems to not be as interested in bringing the killer or killers of Jelani Day to justice. I found an article over at blackvoice.com and I will link the article down in the pinned comments for you to go over and read it for yourselves. But it shook, it stirred something inside of me. That's why I came down with the question tonight. Why are they not looking for Jelani murderers or murderer? Jelani Day is a black Illinois State graduate. Uh, uh, Miss Soto he is a black Illinois State University graduate who was reported missing on August the twenty fourth in Bloomington, Illinois. Day's vehicle was found two days later in Peru, Illinois, and on September the fourth, his body was found in the Illinois River. His mother, Candace Bolden Day had to wait nearly a month before she was finally able to see her son. His body was not positively identified until September the 23rd. That is 18 days after it was found, even with dental records. What's even more disheartening is the, the neglect of authorities to thoroughly investigate the death of Day. And it displays anti-blackness within the U.S. criminal system. There were there were many discrepancies concerning what actually happened to Jelani. Day's mother requested an independent autopsy to be done because of this. They were uh, they found that there were contradicting facts between the first and second autopsies. The U.S. justice system never seems to show the same interest that they have uh, for white people as they do when it comes to the murder of black people. Day's case was publicized on social media in the wake of the search for Gabby Petito, a white woman who was reported missing earlier this year. People on social media began to realize the Tito case was receiving more attention than numerous black people that had gone missing around the same time, such as Day. The criminal justice system appeared to work in Petito's favor. They found out what happened to her fairly quickly and after she was after she was reported missing. And now they even have what they report to be her possible killer. He's been found. Now, the question that I have is, why is there never a sense of urgency for the justice system to involve, solve the murders of black people? Day's mother spoke in an interview with BNC in response to the local agency's response to her son's disappearance, and this is what she had to say. She said, it didn't seem to me that Bloomington was putting any effort into finding my son, and neither were Peru. The only people that were looking for my son was me, my children, my friends, and people I did not know. Black, family, black families need to meet their own should not need their own private investigators to find out what happened to their loved one. If a family member 
members are doing the work, then that what what is the need for the police and other agencies within the criminal justice system? What are they doing? This makes people question the efficiency of the criminal justice system. While there have been studies that attempt to deny anti-Blackness within the criminal justice system, the facts and the re reality of many Black people in America tell a different story. The statistic sheet provided by the Federal Bureau of Investigation said Black people are more likely to become victims of homicide than any other race. But then according to the Washington Post, while Black people are more, more likely to become victims of homicide, they still are the least likely among racial groups to have their murders lead to an arrest. This failure to thoroughly investigate the murders of Black people clearly shows anti-Blackness within the criminal justice system. People will begin to question, why is there a need for a criminal justice system if people are forced to do the job themselves? Dave's mother and the people who were in the community with him should not have to plead for a federal authorities to take over his case. Day's mother released a statement on Facebook on October 11th that read, my son was murdered and my goal and purpose are to find out what happened and hold those responsible accountable. Jelani Day deserves more. Every single Justice Department should be thorough in its investigation to ensure that every missing person case gets the same care. And I would totally agree with that because it does seem as if he failed to the back burner. I set up because I am an avid CNN watcher and I watch day after day from Whoop Blister down to Jack Tapper down to what's his name? Anderson Cooper, Don Lemon, and Chris Cuomo. Talk about this situation with Gabby Petito every single day. We knew when John Walsh from um, America's Most Wanted was involved. We knew when Dog the Bounty Hunter got involved. We we saw them outside the laundry's house day after day. We saw them looking in places of interest every day. But not one of those shows have taken the entire bro program the time that they're allotted on those shows to focus in on what happened to this young king before me right now. I don't see people uh, doing no major donating. I don't hear nothing about dog coming through to do nothing. I ain't heard nothing about John Walsh offering his services. I haven't heard any of that. So if any of those people who can make things shake and move, have been involved, then drop it in the panic section, also known as the comments. Enlighten me. But I watch a lot of news and I have yet to see where they're giving this black boy any of the attention that we had to endure when Gabby was missing for the time length that she was missing. All you saw was every day somebody bringing it up about new leads in the Gabby Petito case, even after her remains were found. Then it turned to looking for the person of interest, which was her fiance, Brian Laundry. What about this young man right here? He got family that, that he mattered to. Should he not be afforded the same amount of efforts to find out who ended his life? Now, I've heard so the, oh, the biggest thing around him was people were trying to say that he had organs missing. His mother came out later and stated that that was not correct. But even though his organs were not removed, that still does not remove the fact that more work needs to be done to come to a conclusion as to what happened to him. 
and everybody that is involved in this story that had a part of this man's life ending needs to be held accountable. This is a slap in the face to all the civil rights movement advocates. From Martin, who said that he dreamed of a day that his children and their children will be judged by the content of their character and not their color. It seems as if that has become a thing of the past because had George, George Floyd not died in America's eyesight and all the lands across the land, Derek Chauvin would not have received anything any type of punishment for what he had done. At what point are we going to start forcing these people to do their jobs? Because the power of the people ain't never faulted. But see, that's another problem within our community. We don't stick together. We're rather, we'd rather beat each other up all day while each and every one of us and our children are possible targets every day. And the most disheartening part about it all is if something was to happen to them, we wouldn't even fucking get some just, just, uh, satisfaction because law enforcement has shown us that they don't work as hard for people of color as they do those who bear the complexion for that protection. Mm. Well, we will continue to look for answers and I'm not going to stop talking about him. I'm not going to stop saying his name, Jelani Day, because he may not have meant nothing to some, but he was everything to the people who knew him and loved him. And they have a right to know what happened to their loved one and have those person or persons of interest brought in for questioning and possible charging Okay, that's how I feel about that. Next, this little boy right here. Now, when I first reported this story to you guys, I was all up and through my feelings because I said he was bullet law. I said he come from a little privilege and they trying to bully him. And if you were able to see those videos that were floating around online about how he got tossed around like he was a sheet of paper, that make you feel like, well, dang, if he's doing well in school, because he supposedly went to a private school, then he chose to go to Timberview, you would think that, oh my, what a horrible thing to happen to someone until people began to talk. And then the Arlington police chief said that he don't believe bullying played any role in uh, the school shooting at Mansfield ISD's Timberview High School. Shortly after the shooting, which injured two students and a teacher, Timothy Simpkins' family said he had been charged, he'd been a target of bullying. They said that's what led to the classroom fight that ended with the shooting. The family of the injured student involved in the fight denied the boy bullied Simpkins. The police chief said that Simpkins participated in high risk activity leading up to the fight and that the announcement was made at the town hall meeting by the Mansfield ISD. Police chief, uh, Arlington police chief said the only evidence of bullying he seems to see so far is a statement from Simpkins family. He believes the shooting stemmed from some sort of disagreement between the suspect and the victim. Two weeks after the Timberview High School student shot 15 year old, a 15 year old and a teacher and grazed a teenage girl, Chief Jones gave an update on the uh, incident. He said, this was not a bullying incident. I just want to take that narrative out of the equation. Mr. Simpkin is involved in high risk activity and high risk activity led to the disagreement within the community. Now his statement totally rebuked the statements made from Simpkins family, but he did not go any further in explaining what type of high risk behavior, but I'm nosy, so I went to digging. The children who attend this school 
I found some of their Facebook pages. And in those Facebook pages, I was appalled, gassed, and gagged. They said that young Timothy was a drug dealer. He was selling the he was selling the stativas. Uh-huh. And that that situation stemmed from either the young man not paying for the stativa and only or trying to get more. I don't know which one it is. He said uh, he has been charged with, you know, aggravated assault, and they are appropriate. That he wanted, the chief wanted to charge him with the most severe charge they could. The announcement came Thursday at a town hall meeting to address school safety at the Mansfield ISD. Some of our kids were scared. Some of them, it was just another day, says one parent. The district official safety protocol allows for one officer on elementary campuses and two on middle and high school campuses. But some parents said they've come to the campus and haven't seen the officers. There was some talk of install, uh, installing metal detectors on campus. Police say Simpkins was able to come to the school with a gun pack in his, with gun in his backpack. Not every parent agrees with metal detectors of the gold too. That's a lot of money to have 40 something doors manned, one parent said. I believe a simple way to start is clear backpacks. What do y'all think about that? Oh, let me let y'all hear, hear a little bit of what the good chief had to say about the whole situation. Hold on. was and not a bullying incident. And I just want to take that narrative out of the equation. Two weeks after a Timberview High School student shot 15-year-old Zakia Selby and teacher Calvin Pettit and grazed a teenage girl, Arlington Police Chief Al Jones gave an update on the investigation. Mr. Simpson is involved in high-risk activity. And uh, that high-risk activity led to the disagreement within the community. Chief Jones. Now, I don't know what else to say about this other than maybe it is wise that when we hear a story that we don't just immediately jump on it. Because you know not what these kids are. See, from just the outside looking in, it looked like a case of bullying. But now we've come to learn this boy is a little drug dealer, a little thug thug sometimes. And it was a situation involving what he's involved in that led to the fight. He had that gun because he was already planning to do something, if necessary. So, and now that all of that has come out, I hope little Timothy is a, a, you know punished to the full extent of the law. Because that's the awful way to start your life. He needs to be taught a lesson so that he will move a little bit differently in this world that we live in today. Because that's the quickest way to become a victim, okay? Get your education and live life to its fullest. But that was it, and that is all that I had for you all today on this episode of Their Business, My Views. Please, again, check out the community wall if you are interested in participating in this panel discussion. Please feel free to hit me up in the email, which is always in the description box below each and every one of my videos. Or you can hit me up on the inbox over at IG at Lady underscore Nika. That's it. That's all. In clothing, as always, remember, you do not have to be great to get started, but you must get started in order to be great. And it is the depth of your struggle that will determine the ultimate height of your success. You guys have a great remaining to your night. I plan on doing the same. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.